गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम डॉक्टर लिजी फिलिप फ्रॉम आई आई टी चेन्नई गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच मैडम फॉर जॉइनिंग अस टुडे इन स्पाइट ऑफ योर बिजी शेड्यूल इट्स माय प्लेजर सर आई विल डू अ फॉर्मल वेलकम देन वी विल स्टार्ट मैडम या आई रिक्वेस्टेड द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू जॉइन अस वी हैव अराउंड 180 टू uh, 200 210 पार्टिसिपेंट्स दे विल जॉइन अस इन अ फ्यू मिनट्स i welcome you all to the day 4 session 1 of five days online faculty development program on academic writing we have with us today eminent professor from iit chennai dr reji philip professor in the department of civil engineering also madam is having the responsibility of dean planning iit chennai let me give a brief profile of dr lichi philip in fact it is a 67 uh, page curriculum which i i have compressed it to two pages pardon me madam in, in case if i uh, leave any inf uh, important information madam's uh, research areas include collection treatment and distribution of water and uh, waste water both uh, domestic and uh, industrial reuse and uh, recycle water quality monitoring system hazardous waste management bioremediation of contaminated soils air and water with heavy metals pesticides and other hazardous organic compounds advanced waste minimization and management technologies emerging contain contaminant removal sanitation and uh, the work madam has done in the field of water rural water supply is commendable madam has got uh, in her credit scopus index international journal publications of number about 160 plus in 68 different journals as on the march 2022 103 international conference papers and uh, 36 national conference papers in her credit she has got a author index that is h index of 37 and uh, uh, as on date more than 4500 plus citations of her research papers two patents awarded and uh, six patents applied and seven technology transfer to the industries and agencies madam has written eight book chapters and she has successfully guided 25 phd students and 11 students currently pursuing their phd madam has also guided 30 mtech students and many of them got best this is award there are several funded projects madam has completed about 26 different sponsored research projects of worth 36 crores funded by different uh, funding agencies such as department of science and technology ministry of environment forest and climate change ministry of urban development indo german center for sustainability ministry of water resources are the few to mention about uh, 10 research projects of amount up to uh, 18 crores are ongoing under her uh, supervision madam has also undertaken the consultancy projects re research based consultancy projects 22 of them she has completed worth of 27 crores by different uh, agencies such as united nations children's fund alanti ship building blue gold engineering usa then india additives limited bill and melinda gates foundation and technip india limited sign guban research india limited chennai petroleum corporation green orient innovation and marketing india private limited duke university usa toro industries incorporation japan university of applied sciences dedson or the few to mention five of the research projects are worth of 1.27 crores are going on madam has also taken up 116 industrial consultancy projects and she has done a lot of uh, uh, continuing education programs nearly a specific one to mention nearly 30 plus training workshops for the benefit of the village community especially the rural people she has also has uh, done an nptel video course on water and uh, water waste waste water uh, engineering uh, as a course coordinator and uh, documentary on water recycle and reuse several programs sponsored by act under the qip program 
She is also a fellow of uh, several scientific and technical bodies, such as Royal Society of Chemistry, National Academy of Engineers, and she is an editorial board member for several journals, three of them to mention Environmental Science, Water Research and Technology, Journal of Environmental Science and Engineering, then Applied Biochemistry and Biotechnology by Springer. And she is also the subject editor in H2 Open Journal, edit, then associate editor of Journal of Hazardous Toxic and Radioactive Waste from American Society of Civil Engineering. Madam is also expert committee member for several bodies at the government level and also at the university level, especially in the states of Kerala and Tamil Nadu, including some bodies of the central government. Madam has taken several corporate activities. Presently, she is having a responsibility of dean planning at IIT Madras, and also she is the area coordinator for waste management group, Indo-German Center for Sustainability from 2010 till date. With this brief introduction, I accord a hearty welcome to Dr. Luigi Philippe, a high profile, high profile in terms of achievement, in terms of recognition. We are privileged to have you this morning, Madam. Thank you very much in spite of your busy schedule for to join, joining us. And I welcome you on behalf of the St. Joseph Engineering College Organizing Committee and all the members, participants, those who are present here. And we are eagerly looking forward for your presentation, Madam. Thank you, over to you, Madam. Thank you, Professor Sudhir, uh, for the introduction, though I don't uh, deserve it. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I have some sort of time constraints. So I'll try to wind up by 10.45 uh, a.m. Uh, and can I share my screen? Yes, yes, madam, you can share your screen. Hope it is visible to all? Yes, madam, it is visible to all. Okay. So I would like to have this section as an interactive session because I don't know what exactly you people are looking for because for me, research uh, proposal writing is a routine job. Every every week we have to put some proposal or other. So uh, if we, uh, we can have a discussion session, it will be useful for uh, uh, all of us, all, all of you, okay? So that's what I feel. So the topic I am supposed to talk is how to prepare a research proposal. So when we talk about a research proposal, first thing uh, we have to uh, know is what is a research proposal? A research proposal is a structured formal document that explains what you plan to research. Okay, your research topic, that should be very clear. Why it is what researching, okay? Your justification, because okay, without justification, doing something uh, is not, appreciated isn't it so that's why why it is worth researching that that should be answered and how you plan to investigate okay your practical approach or theoretical approach how are you going to attack the problem so these are the major components of a research proposal and it is a structured uh, or structured and formal document okay and uh, i don't have to tell very uh, elaborately on what is the purpose of a research proposal. The purpose of research proposal uh, is okay. It's a job, so to speak, okay, to, or to convince the committee. Okay, it can be your research supervisor, funding agency, or university. Because you know that when we do, want to do a PhD, students how to make a research proposal. So that the aim is to convince the supervisor whether the okay, proposal is what getting a PhD when they complete it. And most of the time, I know that most of you are faculty members. So we all are looking for convincing the funding agency. Okay, or sometimes the university will be giving us funds. So you have to con convince the university or the management, okay, who is providing the fund. So first option is, uh, uh, most important purpose is convince the people who is going to fund or who is going to approve the proposal. Okay, uh, and another one is the research is suitable for the requirement of the degree program. Okay, if it is a research proposal and achieving the goal, that means if it is a, a sponsored project or an industrial project or whatever be the thing, okay, we, we, they'll be looking for a goal, whether okay, uh, it, it is achieving the goal and meeting the targets. Okay, so the 
uh, the research proposal should have all these components. And another important thing is don't put too many things in your research proposal. It should be manageable, okay? Because you'll be having a limited time, okay, say three, two years, three years, five years, or some proposals are for one year or six months. So it should be manageable, okay, uh, with the given time and resources constraints you will be facing because your funding will be limited. So if you put everything under the sky, okay, then you, your proposal will not be successful or it will not be rated as a, a good proposal. So we have seen what is, a, what is a research proposal and its purpose, but I will be concentrating on proposal for funding because I thought that this is faculty members, so mostly this is more important. So I'll be concentrating on how to write a pro uh, proposal for funding agency. So what are the essential ingredients? Okay, first one is the issue. Okay, so when, you, when we talk about any proposal, this is very, very important. The issue, what problem does your research address? because it should be a problem and it should be meaningful because no point in going, going and okay, finding a problem for the sake of finding a problem. So you should try to okay, attack or try to address a existing okay, significant problem. So that or issue. So that is very, very important. Then research design. How will the research achieve its objective? Because Many problems will be there and you'll be having some plan unless you make a plan which will be achieving the goal. Okay, so that, that should be very important. Okay, so that is what the research design. So first you have to identify the issue, then you have to design the thing. Okay, just don't go and tell that, okay, I wanted to go to the uh, moon and tell that I'll make some vehicle which will be moving in uh, earth. Okay, it will not be happening, isn't it? Okay, so how to, uh, how, how will the research achieve its object, objective? That is very, very important. And everybody will be looking, okay, when they are spending some money, okay, what is the benefit? What will be the research contribute? Just for the sake of doing something, don't do it. Okay, it should be having a tangible benefit. Then definitely, okay, the funding agency will be benefiting, you will be benefiting and the society will be benefiting. So these are the mo most important three ingredients of a research proposal, the issue, the research design, and the benefit. Now, uh, when we talk about the uh, research proposal for uh, funding, okay, we have to uh, first identify the funding agency. You, have, you should decide which funding agency you are going to submit the proposal because I am there in uh, around 10 or 12 okay, funding in the committees of PSC or PAC committee or TSC committees of funding agencies starting from DST, Ministry of Environment and Forest, MUA. Okay, most of the time what happens is people will be recycling the proposal. They won't even look into what is the okay, uh, funding agency, what is the funding agency looking for? So that people will not be doing it. So they'll make some proposal for something and they'll recycle the same thing for okay, many, many funding agency. That is not going to work. Before start preparing the proposal, one need to identify the agency you are planning to submit the proposal. Okay, uh, the reason is different agencies have uh, have various mandate. Okay, there is a mistake. Different agencies have various mandate. Okay, for example, okay, all of you must have heard about SCRB, Science and Engineering Research Board of DST. So they are looking for basic research, mostly basic research with. Okay, that means science component should be there and the application should be there. But okay, when we talk about DST, some technology initiatives, okay, some mission type of a project, they'll be looking for applied research. And now many agencies are looking for product development and piloting and field implementation. Okay, so there is a spelling mistake, field implementation. Okay, and some, some funding agency will be looking for academy industry interaction. They always tell that one industry partner should be there for the proposal. Okay, otherwise they will not be funding. And some are mission mode projects. They tell that this region is having this particular problem. So you have to address that problem. So, and there are multinational projects, multi-institutional projects. There are center of excellences, et cetera. So the same proposal will not be suitable for 
all the funding agencies and all the calls. So you should have a thorough understanding about the mandate of each and every funding agency. All this information will be available in the funding agency's website. And whenever a call comes, the call will be having all the necessary and prepare your proposal. So most of the time, the funding agency, what is happening is there is no not sufficient good quality proposal. It is not that the fund, funding is limited. The good quality proposal coming to the funding agencies are limited. Though they get, okay, uh, uh, I, I think I, currently, okay, one is to 25 or okay, something, one is to 20, that is the success rate in a CRB and all. The reason is much of the proposals will get uh, 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 rejected in the preliminary stage itself because they won't be meeting the basic requirement of the funding agency, the mandate for the funding by the agency. So I'm not only talking about SCRB, any, any funding agency, this is the thing, okay? More than 60%, 70% proposals get rejected in the screening level itself because much of these things will not be taken into account. So first you identify the funding agency, okay? So you decided to uh, write the proposal for some funding agency. So based upon that one, you have to uh, identify your problem. Now, how the funding agencies are selecting the proposal, we'll see. So when we identify the area of research, first you identify the funding agency, then you have to identify the area of research. How are we going to do that one? Many agencies have the trust areas of for funding because in their website, if you go, they'll be telling that these are the areas we are looking for. Okay, so okay, read that one carefully. Identify the trust areas related to your specialization. And you don't have any expertise, but you wanted to uh, okay, uh, write a proposal just like okay, somebody is writing uh, about a coconut tree, okay, but uh, cow, they wanted to write about a cow, but they, what they do, they tie a cow, they go and tell that I tied the cow to the coconut tree and keep writing about the coconut tree. Okay, that type of a proposal funding agencies will not be accepting because you have to have expertise in the trust area. So if you don't have that much of expertise, you find out a collaborator who will be okay helping you in that area. So that, that is very, very important. And no funding agency will accept a proposal which is outside their mandate and trust area. Okay, this is very important. They will reject your proposal if it is not falling under the mandate and trust area. Okay, so once you identify the funding agency and the research area, okay, the major task is over for your research proposal writing. Now you have to prepare the proposal. Okay, so you have identified the funding agency, you identified the area of research based upon the trust areas provided okay or uh, preferable areas provided by the funding agency so that is okay that is done now you have to write the proposal so okay when we write the proposal first we should know what all are the criteria used for selection okay this is very important okay your proposal should come to the top isn't it so it should not be getting screened in the first level itself so the most important thing is the novelty Okay, so this is the first thing any committee will be looking for. Okay, what is the novelty in the proposal? There is no point in reinventing the wheel. So uh, your proposal, okay, when we write a proposal, it should have enough novelty. Novelty means, okay, since I am from NY, I can give some examples. Okay, uh, many, many people are working on uh, adsorption. Okay, and most of the time, the funding agencies will not be supporting those type of a proposal, okay, if it is very, very trivial. They'll take one material, okay, they'll make a biochar and they'll, okay, try with some heavy metal or some pollutant and that another proposal will be another material, biochar and another pollutant. So it is just a mix and match type of a thing. There is no novelty what ex exactly they are going to do. But same type of a thing, okay, if they have something new idea, Okay, something extra they are going to do, there is a novelty. I'm just giving an example. And similarly, okay, I'm seeing when I am sitting in the committees last 10 years, 
Another thing is okay, uh, the materials for cement or concrete. They'll come and tell that I will use this material ash, okay, the ash prepared from this material, ash prepared from that material, or I will use this material as my coarse aggregate, okay, that material as my coarse aggregate, okay, like that, okay, because there are no, no no novelty is there, okay, so when you write some proposal, see that enough novelty is there, okay, your thing is advancing the knowledge, this is very, very important, either it is a uh, basic research, applied research, uh, okay, piloting, whatever thing, novelty is the first thing they are looking for. If novelty is not there, okay, your proposal, okay, 100% sure that it will be getting thrown out in the screening level itself. Because this is the most important criteria they will be looking for. Second one is scientific content, value addition, and relevance. Okay, this is very important. Some people will come and tell so many things, big, big things. But when we look into the proposal, there is no scientific content. There is no scientific way of writing, the, uh, conducting the studies, or no explanation why they how to do it, or okay, what are they going to achieve it, and how it is going to help the existing knowledge or system. Okay, none of this information will be there, and it should be relevant to the existing system or relevant to the country. Okay, if we sit here and go and talk about okay, uh, uh, Antarctica, uh, uh, some glacier thing, okay, or some uh, the pollution of glaciers, it may not be that relevant to uh, India. So glacier mel melting is important, but glacier quality may not be that important. But I'm just giving some example. So relevance to the country or relevance to the funding agency is also very important. So this is another selection criteria all the funding agencies are using because I know because I told you I'm there in 10 or 12 committees. So what we look for the proposals when it comes for funding. Okay, so this is a second point. That point is proper proposition. Okay, more than 50% of the proposals whatever coming for funding lack this one. Okay, problem definition. They will be talking everything under the sky. What they are, what the PA is going to do. Okay, it is not defined well or why it need to be done. So that, okay, the, there is existing gap and why this is very important. That definition is not coming. So proper problem definition is very, very important. That shows that you understand what you are talking about. So the proper problem definition is very important. Then objectives and scope, because whenever we talk about a problem, for example, climate change, there are multiple aspects to this one, isn't it? So I'm going to address the climate change problem. That is not a proper problem definition. Are you going to address, okay, because of the climate change, how the rainfall, the rainfall this one is going to change or how the water level this one or how the temperature is going to rise? Okay, many, many aspects are there. So you should have a, clarity of objective and scope because you have limited time you have limited resources because each funding agency will tell that this is the maximum amount available for the project and all so within that time and within the uh, resources you have to define your problem and you define your objective and the scope okay that means these are the things okay to achieve, achieve the objective these are the things i will be doing so that is the scope so clarity of objective and scope is very, very important. And next important point is well-defined methodology, because this will tell to the funding agency or the committee how you, how, how much you know about the subject and how are, whether okay, you have the confidence, you have the capacity to execute the work. So well-defined methodology is very, very important because if it is very hashy fashy nobody will be accepting your proposal okay so this is another important thing and feasibility to achieve the target okay the, you will be putting the uh, methodology and all the things but some methodology whatever you are putting may not be feasible at all okay you will not be able to execute that one in a proper way so that is another thing how much okay feasibility to achieve the target feasibility to do the work then naturally if it is a 
a national funding agency they'll be looking into national importance of the work so if you have many good proposals which is most suitable or which is having ma maximum impact that one will be selected then okay this is very important okay just for the sake of writing some proposal or just okay you know that that area has funding so don't uh, just put proposals in an area where you don't have expertise because people will look into your background people will look into your past contributions okay your credentials credibility okay that is very important so expertise is another important thing okay then last one is budget okay you cannot ask too much of budget because each agency will be having a cap and okay, if you ask too low a budget also it will be a problem because that shows that you don't have any idea about what is the cost involved in executing the project so your budget should be reasonable so uh, in almost all the funding agencies okay this uh, these are the criteria used for okay selection of the proposal okay because you know okay they will be getting okay one is to one is to uh, 25 or one is to 100 sometimes okay proposals so they have to weed out lot of proposals so initial screening they'll be looking into these aspects they won't even go through the complete proposals okay and weed out many of the proposals so you have to be extremely extremely okay careful about the selection criteria and many people are not aware so that's the reason i thought that i'll put what are the criteria used for selection anybody wanted to discuss anything at this point or okay we'll uh, have the discussion at the end hello we will have the discussion at the end okay okay so now i will go in in details of each and everything okay when i was preparing the proposal i have seen okay one presentation and i thought that that is very very useful so some of the contents i borrowed from them okay because no need of reinventing the wheel so i am giving complete details here so okay so research uh, how to prepare the research proposal the first steps so you have to ask questions to yourself okay what is the problem okay we have seen isn't it what is the purpose of the proposal and all the things so first question you have to ask what is the problem and why should it be studied okay this is very very important okay okay this one if you can find out an answer for this one this is selection and statement of the problem okay the answers okay you ask these questions and give the answers that will be your statement of problem and okay problem identification problem prioritization and justification all these things will be coming in this step okay then what information is already available okay so that is what is known as literature review okay so you have to collect lot of literature and review okay because unless you know what is the state of the art of the subject the, you cannot tell what is the novelty isn't it what is the problem still existing so you have to do a literature review okay and you should know how to review the literature because a lot of publications will be available so you should have the capability to identify the relevant papers and review it properly and find out what is the gap existing in the thing okay so that is literature review okay the first one is problem definition or introduction or okay background okay that one will come here then how to do the aim and objective why do conduct research what is the achievement of the research okay what is the problem you are going and what you will be getting so that should be your objective or aim of the project okay or okay a performance evaluation of such and such or uh, 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 preparation of a new system something like that so why do you conduct the research and what is the achievement of the research that one will be coming as the objective so this is the question you have to ask and the answer will be your objective so the things will be aim or goals general and specific objectives hypothesis okay so you will be having a generalized goal or objective then you will be having the scope then okay next one is the research methodology so what are all the questions we have to ask how to carry out the research 
how to collect the data and information, where from to collect the data and information. So all these things will be constituting your uh, research methodology. So it, it, it is variable, okay, it will be depending upon the type of research, data collection techniques, sampling, data analysis process, data processing plan, data interpretation process, all those things will be coming in the research methodology. So each and every step, these are the questions you have to ask and answer to that one. Then your that section will be ready. Okay, now, okay, work plan means who will collect and when. Okay, that is the work plan or you, you have to give a work plan for each and every proposal, whether you will be Okay, if it is a three-year project, okay, each month, what are you going to do? So, who will collect and when? And, okay, so that is a work plan. Personal, man, manpower, timetable, uh, timetable, all the things, okay, will be uh, uh, dealing with this one. And and research administration plan for big, big research, okay, this is very important. How will be monitored? Because many uh, research, okay, big value projects, centers, et cetera, need a, research administration plan. That means in between somebody should be evaluating your progress. Uh, you should be having an advisory committee. You should be having a governing council, all those things. Okay, those also should be included. How will be monitored? How the research finding will be used? Okay, all those things will be coming. Then budget and funding organization, what and how much resources are needed? Who will provide the resources? And I told you first, okay, uh, identify the funding agency and okay, prepare the thing that will be a better option. And who will submit, how to submit, where to submit, all these things, okay, other initial steps, okay, you have to do it. Then, okay, now coming to the, uh, how to write a research proposal. The proposal should have sufficient in information to convince your readers that you have an important research idea, you have a good grasp of the relevant literature and the major issues and your methodology is sound. Okay, these are the important aspects of a research proposal I am telling again and again. Okay, okay somebody is asking, can you okay, explain a little bit, uh, little bit more on the research administrative plan? Okay, research administrative plan, for example, if you have a center of excellence, okay, if, if the agency is giving you more than one crore or two crore money, always they will be, okay, they will be a little skeptical whether you will be delivering on time and whether it will be going fine. So instead of coming back to the funding agency for the annual review, they always tell that you should have a advisory board and you should, or you should have a governing board. That means governing board, with, um, uh, Governing board will be looking into the overall, okay, uh, 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 overall uh, sender's performance. That means they'll be giving you the guidelines and big picture, okay, how to proceed and all the things. And advisory board, okay, it will be subject experts from that area, from other institutes. So this advisory board people, okay, you have to select and get it approved by the uh, funding agency. So this advisory board will be meeting every three months or four months based upon the condition you have put it. And they will be evaluating your okay, uh, progress every three months. And if you are not going in the right direction, they will put back you in the track and all. So this is the research administration, okay? Mostly this is done for big value projects, okay, senders and okay. Most of the time, big value project means about two crore, three crore, always they uh, tell, okay, you have to have a, a research administration plan, how are you going to do it and all. Okay, hope it is clear. Okay, and uh, somebody is asking how that research administration is working for multi, multi um, national projects, multinational projects from each country, you'll be having large number of okay uh, partners in the thing. So you'll be having an advisory board for Okay, India and advisory for, okay, I'm talking about if you talk about an EU, e, e, European Union uh, DST project. So you'll be having an advisory board in India and you'll be having an advisory board in okay, Europe or you'll be having a combined advisory board. So this advisory board will be meeting minimum once in six months. Okay, so sometimes they'll be asking the 
PA2 suggests the advisory board. Sometimes the funding agency themselves will be okay constituting the advisory board. Hope it is clear. Yeah. So now, okay, I told you how to write a research proposal. The first thing is title. Okay. So title. Title. Okay, it should be concise and descriptive because that is the first thing somebody will be looking into. So it should be concise and descriptive. Think of an informative but catchy title because that is very, very important because first information or first impression is the best impression. That's what we always tell, isn't it? And please imagine, okay, most of the funding agency, the committee members who is going to select your proposal are extremely busy, busy people. I don't know why it is happening always. And they will be there in multiple, multiple committees. So they will not be having too much of a time to go through complete proposal and all. So, okay, they'll be reading initial things. So that impression, whatever you are able to give from the title and abstract and all, that will be very, very helpful because if title and abstract is not good, okay, rest assured your okay, project most probably will not be getting selected because these are very important. So that's why I'm telling, think of an informative but catchy title. An effective title not only picks the reader's interest, but also predisposes him her favorably towards the proposal. So this is very, very important. Put a, okay, many people would studies on the performance or, or studies on okay, water treatment like that. Don't put that one, okay? Be specific. I'll give some example. Okay, so this is okay, uh, one example. Sustainable solar powered wastewater treatment systems to improve hygiene and sanitation in schools by adopting water recycling and online quality monitoring. Okay, it is little descriptive, but this tells you completely on what the project talks about. Yes, no. Okay, so yeah, this is the title of the project, okay, okay, which we got 2.5 crores or something like that funding. Okay, what I'm trying to tell is. Sometimes you give a title that speaks everything. So, or, okay, Sutram for easy water. Yes, it is a very catchy title. Okay, this is another 10 crore project title. Okay, we got it from DSC. What I'm trying to tell is Sutram, it is an acronym, but when we make any proposal, make it very, very catchy so that people will have an okay, interest to go through further, spend little more time and all. So I'm just giving, okay, I'm not telling that, you are, uh, this one should be exactly like this or anything, okay? You can have very crisp, very catchy, or you can have little bit of descriptive, but giving all the information in the title. Okay, so these are some of the examples of the titles that will clearly tell what the proposal is all about. Okay, so you have to be careful about, okay, uh, giving the title of your proposal. Now, coming to abstract, okay? This is the most important thing. Most of most of the time, this is what decide your fate or your proposal's fate. Okay, it is a brief summary of approximately three hundred words. Either it is abstract. Sometimes they call it as executive summary. And depending upon the funding agency, it varies from two hundred to uh, yeah one page. Maximum three hundred words means one page. So that is what maximum they'll be asking. So you have to express yourself or you have to give complete information of the project, okay, what, what is the problem, what, what you are going to do, and what method you will be using, and what are the deliverable, everything should be coming in this 300 words. It should include the research question, the rationale for the study, the hypothesis, if any, the method, and the main findings. And as I told, this is the most important part. Many a times, the decision is taken based on this one. Because if your abstract is, Okay, not conveying anything, very hachi patchy thing, nobody is going to proceed further. So give maximum importance to your title, abstract, and problem definition. So it is very, very important because you have to get the attention of the people. I told you, okay, somebody will be, because for any of this okay, program advisory committee or technical advisory committee, we'll be getting 70, 80 proposals to be reviewed in two days time and we have to do it along with all of the, our existing work. So you, you can imagine how much time we'll be able to 
okay uh, dedicate for any of these things okay so that's why i'm trying to tell and i'm talking about my this one okay and this is the case for almost all the committee members so if you are uh, 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 title is interesting your abstract is interesting or your executive summary is interesting half the work is done okay for example okay the same proposal i have given here okay the uh, example i am giving okay it should be very crisp, simple, but convey everything. Okay, this is only, okay, I don't think okay, it is only 200 words or something like that. That was a, because sometimes they'll ask you to make the proposal only four page and all. So then the smaller the proposal, okay, it, it become more difficult because you have to be very, very concise and you have to convey everything. So this is an abstract. The proposed project will develop a sustainable solar powered wastewater treatment system for schools. The proposed system will incorporate cost-effective and reliable online water quality monitoring to ensure the quality of treated wastewater, thus preventing the health risk associated with reuse of safe and safe water. That means you are talking about you will be developing a new system, new sensors, you will be looking into health risk, and you will be recycling the water. Everything should come in that. The main goal of the project is blah, 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 and major deliverables are so once they see this type of a okay abstract, they know that yes, this person has some idea, some content. Okay, they know what they are talking about. I'm just giving an example. Okay, so you may be writing much better than this. Okay, what I am trying to tell is your abstract should convey. Okay, what what is the research problem? What you are going to okay uh, address? Okay, and what is the methodology and what are the deliverables? Okay, now how to write? Okay, the introduction. Okay, this is another important part of the uh, uh, proposal. Okay, uh, they, it has different names. Somebody call it as introduction. Some sometimes okay, they call it as background. Sometimes they call it as problem definition. Okay, one not the same. Okay, all these things are okay the same. Okay, their ex the expectations are the same. So here, what we have to do. We have to provide the necessary background or context for context for your research problem. Okay, try to place your research question either a current hot area or an older area. That still is very important. Okay, and provide a brief but appropriate historical backdrop. Provide the contemporary context in which your proposed research questions occupies the central stage. Identify the key players and refer to the most relevant and representative publication. Try to paint your research question in broad brushes and at the same time, bring out its significance. Okay, is it clear? That means, okay, in the background, you have to tell that what is the existing scenario? What is the problem? What people have done? Okay, still, what is the gap? Okay, what is the need of the study? Okay, all these things should come in your background. Okay, with relevant li literature. So when we read the background, we okay, the uh, committee members should get an idea that yes, this person understand the thing. They have a clear idea about it and what they are talking about and what they are going to do. So most difficult part of a proposal to write is the background because if you put okay enough uh, effort in the background, then remaining part is okay because you are methodology and all because it is in your area it will be very easy for you to write but background is very important because this gives the okay feel about the problem okay this is like okay introduction part of your any publication if you write your introduction part of the publication very well okay the acceptance rate of the paper is very good isn't it exactly the same way when you write a research proposal the introduction or background or problem definition is very very important so your in okay your title abstract and introduction people will not go very thoroughly to the methodology and other things unless they feel that your okay, proposal is good okay so these three things will decide whether you will be getting into the second stage or not if you make these three things good or well written then i can assure you that any committee member will recommend your uh, project for at least for presentation stage if this is not done, but you have a good idea. Still, it is doubtful whether your proposal will get through in the first screening itself. So 
so this i have already explained introduction contents state the research problem which is often referred to as the purpose of the study provide the context and the set of stage for your research questions in such a way as to show it is necessary and important present the rationale of your proposed study and clearly indicate why it is worth doing briefly describe the major issues and sub problems to be addressed by your research identify the key independent and dependent variables of your experiment or theoretical work state your hypothesis set the the limitation the delimitations or boundaries of your proposed research and provide definitions of key concepts if it is a very new thing people will not be understanding then you have to provide this one this is optional so your introduction should have this one that doesn't mean that your introduction will be going pages and pages together maximum one or two pages okay limit your introduction to that okay don't go beyond that one so this is an example okay okay i don't want to read completely there have been many reports of lack of hygiene and sanitation okay so this is existing condition due to this okay what is the problem the the toilet infrastructure is available in many schools many instances it is unusable condition it is in an unusable condition due to lack of water supply okay we are defining the problem moreover schools are the best demonstration field for good practices on hygiene sanitation and environmental protection you are talking about which uh, which one you are selecting as water resources are becoming scarce it will be prudent to treat the waste water near to the point of generation and reuse okay what i am trying to tell is all the points should come okay because i told you this is a part of a proposal maximum page limit was 4 so we have to make everything very condensed so that's why i am putting here i have big ones i didn't want to put it here it will be too lengthy so what i am trying to tell is all the contents will be there and when it becomes small proposal sometimes okay for 10 crore project they will be asking two page proposal that, those are the things very very difficult to write if it is 20 page then you have much more freedom much more space to put your idea so depending upon the requirement you have to write the introduction or background of what are your thing now next step is how to Uh, right research uh, okay, literature review literature review serves several several important functions ensures that you are not reinventing the wheel this is very important and many a times people are not doing the literature review properly they are not aware what is going around okay so so doing a proper literature review and be familiar with what is going on in this area is very very important for any researcher either it is for funding or for publication or anything you know that it is very important and give credit to those who have laid the groundwork for your research demonstrate your knowledge of the research problem demonstrate your understanding of the theoretical and research issues related to your research question shows your ability to critically evaluate relevant test information indicates your ability to integrate and synthesize the existing literature provides new theoretical insights or develops a new model as the concept okay and convince your reader that your proposed research will make a significant and substantial contribution to the literature this is very important based upon the literature review you have to tell what is the existing gap and what is the need for the study so that's why you have to do a proper literature review okay so once the literature review is over you have your objective and scope then come to the methodology so in methodology what are we doing okay methodo in the methodology section how you plan to tackle your research problem it should be very clear it will provide your work plan and describe the activities necessary for the completion of your project be clear and precise when you write the methodology it should contain sufficient information for for the reader to determine whether methodology is sound because many times what they will do they will give some methodology okay it may not be achievable doable or lot of okay problems are there with respect to the methodology okay if you adopt that methodology you may not be getting the uh, intended results okay so okay this is the purpose of the methodology section so you have to very clearly state what you are going to do how you are going to do okay and what are the data you will be collecting okay all those things should be there 
okay, with proper clarity. Your method section needs to be elaborate. The data collection process in qualitative research has a far greater impact on the results as compared to quantitative research. Okay, so if it is a data collection thing, how are you doing the data collection? How are you taking care of the statistical reliability? All type of things okay, has to be incorporated in your methodology. Otherwise, they'll tell that the methodology section is not written properly. We are not aware, okay, we are not very sure that the person is able to conduct the carry out the research he or he or she doesn't have any clear picture of the work. Okay, all those comments will come from the reviewers. So we have to be extremely careful about the. Now, extremely careful means you give proper and correct information and in an elaborate way. Okay, for quantitative studies, include the following details. Design, is it a questionnaire study or a laboratory experiment? What kind of design do you choose? Subject of participants, who will take part in the study? What kind of sampling procedures do you use? Experimental thing, okay, it is very important how you are going to collect the sample, what instrument you are going to do, or what sampling techniques you are doing. And same thing is needed, okay, for questionnaire type of a survey type of a study also. Instruments, what kind of measuring instruments or uh, questionnaires do you use? And this one will help you to get the budget also. Why do you choose them? Are they valid and reliable? All these things, okay, you have to include. And how do you, and procedure, how do you plan to carry out your study? What activities are involved? How long does it take? All these things, okay, you have to, okay, clearly mention in the methodology section. Okay, and this is my, okay, suggestion. Okay, if you can okay, provide pictorial representation okay, about your methodology, about your proposal, that will be having much more okay, very good in positive impact. Okay, because okay, when you make it as a pictorial form, okay, they know that you thought about it and at a glance it will be very clear to the reviewers. So whenever possible, you try to give. A, a pictorial representation or a schematic representation of your methodology. So this one I am just putting something, okay, some one student, okay, who's a okay, PhD, PhD thesis thing. So how, okay, these are the, these are the scope and this scope, okay, what are the things they are going to do, okay, and wh what they'll be getting. So like that. So if somebody see this type of a flawed diagram, then it is very clear that, yeah, you are very, okay, you, you thought about your methodology very clearly and you know what is the sequence, what are the things you are going to do. Instead of talking, then this type of a figure will give you, okay, give the uh, reviewer or the committee members a much clear picture. So that is very, very important. Okay. If somebody is asking about budget estimation, I'll come to that one, okay? So budget is the last one, isn't it? I'll come to that one. Okay, so this is clear, isn't it? Okay, methodology, methodology or project concept, okay, you give it as a pictorial thing, then it will have a okay, lot of impact. So try to do this one when you make a proposal. Yes, it will take time, but okay, the time, whatever you are spending for this one is worth doing that one. Instead of writing, 100 proposals and getting one accepted or writing two proposals and both the things getting accepted. Okay, there is a difference, isn't it? So, so the, if you write good proposals, I can tell you, your hit rate will be more than 90, 95% because, okay, okay, for me, okay, almost 90% or 95% of my proposals are getting funded. The reason is we spend time, okay, we follow all the requirements properly. So that is the reason, okay, anybody, put a properly written proposal, the chances of funding is very high. Okay, it's clear, isn't it? So now, okay, uh, results. Okay, you, have, you may be thinking that why this lady is talking about results during uh, the proposal writing itself. But during the proposal writing itself, if you have some preliminary results and you discuss about that one, okay, it will give a very positive impact to the proposal because if you are just starting some area and you are making a proposal and you have already thought about that uh, research problem and you have done some preliminary work 
and you are getting promising results and you wanted to continue the study and take it to a, a, like a higher level, okay, then okay, the, that proposal will be having more acceptance compared to a just fresh proposal. You didn't try at all whether it is going to work or not. Okay, definitely the funding agency will think, isn't it, where they have more risk and where there are less risk, where the chances of success is more. Okay, so that's why the results, okay, if you can include some results of okay, your study in that area, that will be very, very helpful. That doesn't mean that you have okay, done all the study and asking for funding for the same, they will not give. Okay, you have done to some level and you have to go to the next level for that one, you are asking funding, then the funding agency will be happy to provide that one. So that's why you have to provide the results section. Don't put too much, okay, but some amount, what you have done and what is your expertise and what is the results you get it, okay? Okay, this increase the confidence level of the committee reviewers that you can deliver, okay? That is the thing. You won't be having results at the proposal stage. However, you need to have some idea about what kind of data you will be collecting and what statistical procedures will be used in order to answer your research questions or test your hypothesis, okay? And it is always advisable to provide some preliminary studies you have carried out in the proposed area. Otherwise, they will think that you never work, you don't even have any idea, you are putting something for the sake of putting, okay? So don't create that type of an idea in the reviewers and a committee members' mind, okay? Then the chances of getting okay, funding is uh, less. So when you provide uh, results, naturally discussion part also should be there. You need to communicate a sense of enthusiasm and confidence without exaggerating the merits of your proposal. Don't tell, okay, this is, okay, uh, my proposal is the best and it will be bringing okay, all those things, okay. Be concise and tell the truth and but be enthusiastic. Tell that, okay, if, if I conduct these studies, this, these things will be coming and these are the things I'll be getting and all the things in a clear way. Okay, that is the purpose of the discussion part. You also need to mention the limitations and weaknesses of the proposed research, which may be justified by time and financial constraints, as well as by the early developmental stage of your okay, research area. Okay, this is very good. Okay, budget, when you talk about the budget, first you decide, okay, I, I didn't show you, um, budget uh, table, okay, uh, what you have to do, okay, in any of the funding agency, there are, okay, uh, usually four heads of high heads. One is staff, okay, for small projects, less than 75 lakhs and all the things, okay, most of, most of, most of the time, they'll be giving only one staff. If it is a field-related work, one staff and, okay, one research staff and one field because uh, uh, data collection person, they may allow, but very, very rarely. So don't put too many stuff, your budget will be cut, cut down there. So you put, if if your proposal is in the range of 50 to 75 lakhs, put the staff, num staff number only one. Most of the DST projects and all will support only one staff. Okay, and put all the salary components that one, so staff. And if it is a bigger project, then according to the, thing, okay, and you give proper justification. Why should you have that many staff? Okay, so that is the first component, staff. Second one is, okay, instruments. Okay, instruments, okay, whatever is needed for your uh, okay, proposal or proposed study. And nobody will be giving you more than 40% of the total project cost as the, okay, in, uh, instrument money. Okay, because many a times the proposal will come, okay, the purpose is just to buy some high-end equipment. Okay, the funding agency will not be giving you money for that one. So put the maximum limit of your equipment cost to 40 percentage. That is a, 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 a thumb rule, okay, a, a, I am telling. Exceptions are there. Some cases, okay, they will tell that, okay, this need a much higher equipment and other things they can manage. Okay, in such cases, they may be giving a, higher value, but in 90% of the projects, okay, your equipment cost will, should not be, or will not be sanctioned more than 40% of the project cost. So you have staff, you have this one. Then another one is consumables, data collection, okay, analysis charges, everything. So depending upon the work, 
you put that one okay so if it is an experimental work you need okay more chemicals consumables okay all the things you put that one okay usually it is 10 to 15 percentage of the project cost okay around 30 percent 25 to 30 percentage will be the staff cost okay then uh, yeah then your uh, uh, equipment cost then chemicals and uh, chemicals classes data collection analysis okay data procurement all those things will be coming next cost then some amount for travel okay for you have to attend the conferences you have to attend the review meetings and if it is a field related thing field that uh, travel cost is there whatever the number you are putting justify that one okay so that is the next component then the last component is contingency contingency okay don't put more than five percentage no funding agency will be giving you more than five percentage for the uh, contingency contingency means whatever is the uh, unforeseen expenditure okay so that is the contingency coming then whatever is the institute overhead 10 percentage 20 percentage but many funding agencies are having a okay fixed amount so you the other one is the project cost then you put the institute overhead and close the project budget hope it is clear to you okay now we will discuss about okay i'll stop fast common mistakes in proposal writing okay what are we discussed people are fa failing to do that and failure to provide the proper contest or to frame the research question failure to delimit the boundary conditions for your research that is another problem failure to cite landmark studies many people cut and paste and they will not be giving any references failure to accurately present the theoretical and empirical contributions by other researchers failure to stay focused on research question okay so these are and failure to develop a coherent and persuasive argument for the proposed research too much detail on minor issues but not enough detail on major issues this is another major problem too much rambling okay going all over the map without a clear sense of direction majority of the proposals are like this you are not focusing you are not identifying the critical problem and giving clarity on that one and details about that one so we have to do that too many citations lapses and incorrect references and too long or too short okay so your proposal okay if they are asking for a 20 page proposal and you put a 28 or 30 page proposal or you put only a 10 page proposal okay it's not good isn't it so too short or too long and some agencies will not be uh, telling you what is the page limit and all but you should have an idea how much a person can read and evaluate so it should not be too long but it, it should not be too short and lacking the information so that is another thing okay guidelines on writing the research proposal proposal writing is important to your pursuit of academic research profession all of you okay need funding for your uh, students for your promotion and all the proposal is in effect an intellectual scholastic contract between you and your committee or funding agency it specifies what you will do how you will do and how you will interpret the results the objective in writing a proposal is to describe what you will do why it should be done how you will be doing it and what you expect will be the result i am just repeating whatever i have told a way weak or fussy proposal can lead to a long painful and often un unsuccessful outcome a clean well thought out proposal forms the backbone for the research work a good proposal hinges on a good idea once you have a good idea you can craft the proposal in an evening okay because initially getting the idea clarity of thought the uh, defining the scope defi defining the boundaries all those things think think read read okay and first okay and you chalk out the points okay once everything is crystal clear in your mind then start writing but without a clarity if you start writing modifying that one will be very very difficult proposals help the size of the project don't make the project too big okay so this is okay basic proposal outline introduction literature review research gap need for the study this is very important okay many of the funding agency may not be asking this one but at the end of the literature review you you should give what is the research gap and the need for the study to justify your study 
then objective and scope methodology expected results budget bibliography all these things are important and some of the components okay various funding agency will be having various format so i have given two different formats here okay tips and tricks this is very important okay i'll take only under five minutes then we can have the discussion read and read okay once it is gone out of your hand you cannot get it back so before sending it out okay sending it out read and read take notes okay before even starting writing the proposal you read think okay think very very carefully and identify the problem take notes talk to experts fellows okay just to okay uh, sound your idea so whether it makes any sense and all okay if you keep everything to yourself and do something many a times okay, you don't have the big picture so you will be lacking that one so it is always okay talk to experts and your uh, colleagues okay who is working in this area so that you can sound your idea whether it is valid or not write topics and topics okay you write many many things coming in this area and okay do it again and again and pick the thing get confused get afraid all these things shows good sign okay unless you get confused and get afraid how can you solve the confusion and come out with a, a clear a clear idea okay generate several research questions systematize research questions cut down this in line with your coherent thinking so you have to think you have to read okay it's not that just start writing something and you will get the funding okay you have to do okay put okay all the efforts so that you will be getting a good proposal then another thing is i told you okay when you put the proposal okay okay if it is a big funded proposal and all give a nice picture okay uh, showing all the aspects of the proposal so that okay before going through this one pictures talk much more than okay words isn't it so they they know that how it will be working okay this is an example of a multi multi institutional project so which component who will be doing who all are in, involved and all the things this is our center of excellence from dst some okay nine institutes are involved so why, how are we going to convey writing too many things will be difficult so you put a picture and tell that whoever will be okay uh, part of that one and how they'll be doing where well, they'll be contributing and all the things okay so this one will be giving you a clear picture isn't it i don't know whether it is clear to you we are looking into uh, this is sutram for ec water so surface water and now water treatment waste water treatment sensors domestic water treatment and resource recovery industry sludge management trouble free sewer reliable water and reliable and good quality sufficient quantity water in nutrient recovery biogas on sustainability framework okay so this is the thing and which all of the institute is involved and in. so what i am trying to tell is this is an example when when you make any proposal big proposals or anything how this type of a picture so that one will okay give a good feeling and convey a lot of things which you will not be able to convey through words okay then your methodology each methodology section okay if you have per package 1 2 3 okay you put some pictorial representation so it will be much clearer what are the things you are going to do it and all give explanation but if you give flow charts it will be very helpful for the people so okay common mistakes to provide context to framework okay frame research questions okay this is common mistake they want do it to delimit the boundary of research issues to cite landmark studies undertaken so far uh, to pro uh, present accurate theoretical background of the study to focus the research questions to develop coherent and pers uh, persuasive arguments too much detail or too much short on major issues too much rambling incorrect citations i have given earlier also i am repeating so this is the common mistake people are making so next time when you write a proposal don't do any of these mistakes do some don'ts okay do produce make it informative and meaningful write easy way to root don't uh, use complex sentences long sentences and words which you don't know the meaning etc use very simple sentences write it in a Okay, a very uh, uh, easy way so that it will it will make uh, easy to read. 
present content in a page use clear headings subheadings be concise and precise check spelling grammar present in accurate acceptable format all these things are important do not use no word which you do not understand okay because when you go for presentation you will be caught on this one so you use only okay when you write the proposal whatever you are putting there okay you should be understanding that one you should be able to explain that one that is very important use of difficult words uh, unimpressive to the readers committees and authority okay so be simple and explain the things properly and this is also important team this is important have people capable of conducting the task mentioned prior experience proven track records etc matters a lot if you have a, a, a team where earlier proposals are, earlier awarded projects are not delivered properly okay and a okay, bad history definitely it is a black mark and if you are uh, by towards the quality of publication okay all those things matters okay if you have lot of junk papers okay that clearly tells that you don't care for quality so all these things are important track budget be reasonable i told you how to make the budget be reasonable too low and too high are problematic plan properly also see the guidelines by the agency because many okay funding don't assume that all the funding agency have the same budget things okay some people will tell that we'll fund only for this one will not fund for this one somebody will tell that you have to get funding from other other sources also all those things are before preparing the proposal read the guidelines properly okay thank you very much already there are some questions Okay, budget. I have named some okay, extra model funding agencies, especially for multidisciplinary projects. Multidisciplinary projects, DST, DBT, all these funding agencies are there. Okay, DRDO. Okay, so uh, okay, DST is a major funding agency in India, and there are other ministries. See, okay, you have CSIR, UGC. All these things will be funding interdisciplinary. Okay, or, or multidisciplinary projects. Okay, you look for the call. Okay, or go to their website. You'll be getting all the information. Okay, uh, please. Okay, can you submit any project proposals in collaboration with institutions like IIC, IIT? Is there any such opportunities for a researcher who work in similar field? Okay, so you can you can submit the proposals. Okay, to the funding agency with the collaborators from IIT, IIC, and all the things. But you have to clearly mention who will do what. and what fund will be going to each institute and all very clear cut distinction should be there with the collaborative institute then you will be able to write the proposal with other institutes there is no problem we have seen many such proposal they should not get a feeling that okay the uh, iits or iics will be doing all the work and the other other person is only an attache that type of proposal will not be getting funded but you have the expertise in some field but you are lacking the expertise in other aspects and facilities you are lacking in other aspects if it is a symbiotic system or symbiotic relationship that means both the parties are getting benefited and all that type of proposals are okay accepted okay we are seeing many such proposals in scrb or water technology and all the things okay that is possible the student is interested in different area and guides in of different area now i am talking about okay uh, uh, the faculty see okay, when okay, you cannot guide a student when you don't have the expertise isn't it so you have to discuss with the student and okay come up with the area or if you want to write okay work in some area do some preliminary studies with the student okay so if the study is meaningful you will be able to publish somewhere and all isn't it so with that one you will be able to write the proposal don't okay just student come and tell and you wanted to immediately write a proposal it is it will not be successful you get one or two students in that area you will be getting the data you will be getting the results you publish that one show that you have some okay some knowledge in that area then write a proposal it will be so the students use it as a preliminary 
study partner then based upon that results you write the proposal then uh, in relation to what if there are changes that were unforeseen but need to be accepted so this one okay it is an administrative issue you write to the funding agency okay if it is okay, uh, reasonable usually they will accept they will put it to the next committee meeting and they will be accepting it but if it is okay not justifiable or they are not convinced it is not possible but if it is a reasonable thing they will allow you to change the budget head and all overall overall amount will, will not be okay increase but okay they will allow you to change from one head to another head and all the things also could you give some examples of funding agencies for okay field research and field research all the funding agencies give funding for field research if it is a relevant problem there is novelty and there is scientific okay content okay then any funding agency will give for field research there is no problem they are they are not okay, restricting field research or lab research or a theoretical work only thing they will be looking is i have shown you isn't it that nine or ten criteria if your field research is meeting that criteria okay any funding agency will be giving you funds okay okay so that is about in the this one any anybody else is having any question please okay i think i have attended all the questions in the chat box okay any more questions i think all the questions are answered yeah. uh madam has to yes sir, good morning sir yeah I have, ma'am, I have one small question. Ma'am, yeah, uh, if uh, one of the investigator, if he is retired, huh. and uh, another investigator, uh, example like me, I am just now I am starting my research. Okay. So togetherly we can combine and write the proposal. Uh, uh, can you give okay. some idea? About? Uh, see, like a retired person. Okay. Uh, it is very tricky. Okay. So they will not be giving the salary or anything for the retired person. okay so okay how are you going to some proposals may be giving but dst and all okay a retired person uh, the, if he or she is willing to help you okay as a coordinator without expecting any money or salary or anything it is possible otherwise it will be a problem okay ma'am okay, ma'am actually may, yeah. uh, sir is working also he is retired uh, yeah. but he is willing to help for a project And, uh, and then okay, if he is still working, okay, there will not be any problem. Okay, he can be the co-guide, the no, uh, co-investigator. There will not be any problem. Whoever is submitting the proposal should have a full full-time job. That is the condition they are putting most of the time. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, since the madam has to leave for uh, another yeah. important meeting, we will come to the section. I will summarize the presentation by Madam Dr. Lizzie Philip. madam gave a introduction on research proposal writing she mentioned about the purpose then essential ingredients she also given the guidelines on how to identify the funding agency how to identify the area of the research then in very detailed manner she elaborated on different criteria that are used for uh, selecting the research proposal study from the novelty scientific content proper problem definition clarity methodology feasibility national importance expertise and the budget and she has also uh, suggested that a pictorial representation will be of uh, more uh, of the methodology or uh, the r&d center or the work plan 1 2 3 etc like that will be of given a more weightage during the evaluation she also elaborated on uh, each component of writing the research proposal title abstract introduction literature review methodology results and discussions she has given a useful hint on common mistakes in the proposal uh, writing and then what are all the components of the budget guidelines on writing the research proposal re, uh, importance of the research gap then elements of the research proposal tips and uh, tricks then uh, uh, common mistakes do's and don'ts and finally the importance of the team formation very wonderful uh, presentation madam because we found it very enlightening you have shared your experience with us thank you very much for spending time with us in spite of your busy schedule 
on behalf of the St. Joseph Engineering College, Mangaluru organizing committee and all the participants present here, I extend a deep sense of gratitude to you. And also on behalf of all of us gathered here, I wish you all the best and every success in all your uh, uh, research and yours in the future. Thank you very much for uh, thank you. joining. Thank you, sir. There are two more questions. I'll just quickly answer. Somebody is asking whether the PA can get the funding. Okay, in some foreign agencies and all, PA can write their salary. Okay, you see, will not allow PA to take the salary. Okay, and second one, okay, what is the difference between a student's proposal and a faculty proposal? Student proposal is Okay, for getting a degree or either it is a BTEC project or MDEC project or PhD. So there will be some criteria for satisfying that one. That is student's proposal. Faculty proposal means faculty will be writing it for a funding, for getting some funding mm -hmm. to enhance their research. So that is the major difference between student's project proposal and faculty project proposal. Okay. So with this one, thank you very much. Okay. And thank you for the organizers to give me this opportunity. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Participants, we shall meet in the afternoon session at 2.30.